Hi everyone, I'm Lyra and I will be your host for today. Welcome to Start Fresh Career 101 for Engineering Freshies. This is the first time we're doing this event for engineering freshmen. Hello to everyone here. Please stick around because we have so much in store for you today. This year's Start Fresh is all about our engineering freshmen and freshmen at heart. Hear the insights from our fellow UP engineering students on how to better adjust to college life and get a head start in preparing for your future. Today's event will be all about orgs, ACADs, and internships. But before we start, I'd like all of us to look back when UP CAPES launched its year-long campaign last September. Small but consistent steps are essential to any career development journey. Start Fresh is just one step that can help you not only in your college life, but in your career journey as well, ultimately taking you one step closer to your dream careers. So before we get one step closer to starting fresh today, we would like to ask the audience to visit the Menti link on the screen. This will be used to gather your questions for the speakers after all the presentations. Also, please stay until the end of the program to be eligible for today's raffle. We will be announcing five winners on Facebook after the event. All right, so before we start with the talks, I'd like to take this moment to reflect on Ang Freshy Life. I think I can say for everyone here that a big part of fresh year was getting introduced to the BS org life. And we all have memorable experiences applying for orgs, meeting new people, and planning various events along the way. With that, let us now introduce our first speaker to talk about Orgs 101, finding your passion and purpose. Rafael Antonio Morelio is a 50-year BS mechanical engineering student in the UP College of Engineering. He graduated from Paris Southridge School in 2016 and was the top of his class. He served as the engineering freshie representative and mass media committee member at the UP Dilemon University Freshie Council from 2016 to 2017. From 2018 to 2019, in 2019, he was the Vice President for External Affairs of UP Arise. Currently, he is the External Affairs Counselor of the UP Engineering Student Council, a layout staff for UP Ingeniero, a Talents and Skills Committee member of UP Lyrica, and a proud Publicity and Publications Committee member of UP CAPES. Now, without further ado, here's our first speaker, Rafael Antonio Moralia to take on the virtual stage. Hello, good morning, good afternoon pala. Good afternoon everyone. So allow me to first share my screen para makita natin yung presentation natin for today. Ayan, so kita po natin yung Melchor Hall. I know some of the freshies here may or may not have seen this hall in person since hindi pa tayo nakakapasok sa UP, but this is the college, this is the home base of the College of Engineering and I'd like to, again, welcome everyone to this talk on Orgs 101, or Finding Your Passion and Your Purpose. So, uh, before, before we start officially our talk, um, I'd like to give everyone the opportunity to exp express their thoughts on passion and purpose. So, um, I'd like to ask the audience, what is your passion? Um, you may annotate your slide, so makikita nyo na meron tayong annotate button in the toolbox, or you may chat your answer in the chat box. So, ang ating tanong is, what is your passion? Pati yung mga UP CAPES members, magsagot na rin kayo. Ano ba yung passion nyo coming into UP? What is your passion in life? Have you discovered it already or not? Ayan. So, pwede tayo mag-chat dito sa baba. I'll give everyone... Just a, just a few moments to um uh, to write their passions. Ayan. Um, may nakikita kong hindi pa writing. I know someone here is saying reading books. Ayan. May nagsulat na yung passion nila is M. Freshy ba yung nagsulat nito? Pakichat. Kung freshy nga ba yung nagsulat nito? 
or baka kaips mem yan na eng daw yung passion nila. Mabuti sa inyo na passion nyo yung college natin. Ano? Ayan. I see someone here said learning. Yan. Tama yan. Pa- to be passionate about learning in any form. Ah, may cooking dito. Ayan. As a nagluluto din sa bahay. Ayan. Magkapera po. Tama. Tama. Magkapera. Sige, go guys. Kaya, buti na lang dito tayo to help us get one step closer kumbaga to our future careers. Ayan. Someone said here, teaching, eat, teaching, music, sleeping, finding purpose. Wow. Passionate about finding purpose. Ayan. So, Um, thank you guys so much for your answers and we do have another question and naturally that would be what is your purpose? So what do you feel like your mission is in life? What do you think um, you're meant to do on this earth? Wow, big question. Tama ba yun? Pero um, at this point in time we're he- at this point in time we're heading into university for the first time. And not just any university, you're in the University of the Philippines. And we're expected to do many things as part of our, uh, as part of our learning as UP. I see to find my purpose. Purpose to find my purpose. I see serving the people. I see serve the people. Educating yourself. Leaving a positive impact. At the, this, is the most, this, is, this is something that I'm pretty sure everybody is. Uh, can relate to. Di ko, pa, di ko pa po alam. And I think that's where I'd like to start our talk for today because um, finding your passion and purpose is something that's not going to be very easy for us. And um, throughout the next several minutes, I'll, 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 give, my, I'll, give, your, I'll, I'll give you an idea on what UP life is, specifically org life, and how it may help you find somewhat a direction towards your passion and purpose. So, Allow me to first introduce myself. So, as you may have heard, I am Raf Morayo, a fifth-year BS Mechanical Engineering student. And you probably heard the list of my affiliations earlier, but if you want a complete list, ito po yun. Ito po yung complete list na mga ginawa ko sa UP, other than mag-aral. And throughout my org life in UP, I've explored and expanded my horizons. And I've tried my hand in, very, in, various, in, in various different orgs. Maybe too much, siguro. And... <laughs> Actually, may tawag dito eh, sa mga, may tawag dito eh, pag magami kang org. Ayan, BS org. Nasabi to nila, ayun na ka din na BS org. Ito yung tipong 3 or 4 or 5 unit course ang pagiging member mo ng org. Kasi ang dami mo nang nalala, nalalaan ng ogas para dito na nagmimisto lang pulso na siya sa saya. And I know what you're thinking, isn't that too much time for orgs? And the answer is yes. That's a lot of time for orgs. But there's a perfectly good explanation for this. Um, to start, org life in UP is very diverse. You can name one thing you're interested in, and you're, there's probably an org for that. And we're not, we don't just do interesting, interesting things in orgs. We also do meaningful action as well. And that's true for virtually every org in UP. But we can't just end the talk here and just let you guys go and apply for an org at random. Our burning question really is, what should we look for in orgs? And I like to offer four um, four tips, siguro, on how to on what to look for in orgs. And first is to find an org that piques your curiosity. So, um, what better way to describe this than to show some greatest hits from my experience? So, um, in 2016, I was encouraged by the Engineering Student Council, yung mga ME reps, to apply as the Engineering Freshman Rep to the University Freshman Council. Um, there wasn't a lot of info given to me about what I was signing up for, uh, but I knew that this was an important leadership position. And as a freshie, it may seem very intimidating to be a student leader in your first year in UP, but I decided that this was the opportunity I needed to explore my horizons in the university. So needless to say, pasabog na agad yung entrance ko sa UP. If you want to learn more about how to work in a team, the student council is the best place to do so. It's high stakes, it's high pressure, but it's a completely life-shaping experience. Uh, you get to learn the ropes also in UP as part of the council. You learn about org life, about student and UP admin, admin relations, maybe a little bit of UP politics, 
And since I was also an ex-official member of the ESC, I also learned the dynamics at Peng. And I also became part of the mass media committee, as you may have heard earlier. And I went from zero to 100 in my Photoshop usage. And while my laptop was struggling to survive, I learned a lot of pub and promo skills that I will, that I will be using later on. So the lesson here really is to not be afraid to, to try on new things. It's a cliche, but please, trust me, it works wonders. It did for me, it may do also for you. And it's important that we seek, prioritize, and appreciate learning opportunities throughout our stay at UP. So that's our first one. So our second point is this. We need to find, we need to look for orgs that develop your skills. So coming out of the e coming out of the mass media committee in UFC, I felt like I wanted to continue my pub work because I felt I felt um, that I was improving in this aspect of, of my skills and I wanted to improve it further. So I applied for UP Capes. Actually, I I applied I applied for the pub and pub committee and I got a dis and I wasn't given a design position. I was given a write-up position. Now I may have done some writing in the past, but this was a completely new level of writing. You're writing scripts and captions and stuff like this, like career handbooks that you that we gave out to graduating students in 2018. So I gave it a shot and even applied to become the job fair write-up team. And uh, to become the job fair write-up head in a team that was composed mostly of juniors and seniors, and I was the lone sophomore. So it was quite intimidating, but I found it as a great opportunity to build my leadership experience. And I found a newfound appreciation for writing, which is something that I'm going to be working on later on after UP, after my first year in CAPES. So um, what you need to understand is that when we join an org in UP, the skills that you're going to learn in your first org can be applied to your second or your third or your fourth or your fifth org. And it's an opportunity for us to seek knowledge and seek uh, um, better skills. And you'll be surprised at how much UP really values um, pushing barriers in your work. And even outside UP in your future careers, the things that you do now in your orgs will be, will be used once you get into your future careers. So our third is to stimulate your interests. And when we say stimulate your interest, I mean any kind of interest. And this is where my membership in UP Lyrica comes in. Um, joining this org was a deliberate step at, for an outlet, as an outlet for my creativity. And since I am also a musician and a producer on the side, but my time ako outside my apps, I wanted to join an org that will really push me to really make my music better and share my knowledge and skills to a wider audience. And I found UP Lyrica as the best avenue for this. And becoming part of the Talents and Skills Committee was a great opportunity to mentor um, fellow members on musicianship, producing, and anything under the sun. So it's a, great, it's a great space as a musician and as a producer to openly collaborate with, uh, with, with fellow creatives as well. And in, it's in a platform provided by the university. So this came at a very, this came at a, at a great level of convenience. And we need to understand that we don't have, we, we shouldn't forget the things that we love when we find our words. And I think this is the most important point, serve the people. And I think what really highlights this is my experience as the engineering student Because I because I found that there was a need to act on the scholar ng bayan tagline. It's one of the most important realizations we need to have. And Kasi tax ng bayan nag, nagpapaaral sa atin. Kaya karapat dapat nasilbihan natin ng bayan. So, as part of the EST, I was able to use my pub skills, my writing skills, my leadership skills to propel the External Affairs Committee in providing campaigns and partnerships for the council. So, we had educational discussions, we went to mobs, we collaborated with organizations. We even went on stage sa Metro Manila Pride to represent the youth sector. And... I felt like this was a culmination of everything that I was working for. So all the tips that I had earlier culminated in my experience here in the council, in the engineering student council. And in the spirit of passion beyond adversity, I'm still here holding on until the next council comes in. So I think what's important is that uh, kailangan natin, what I think what's important is that we need to look at the bigger picture as UP students. Uh, may kakayahan talaga tayo na palingkuran ng sambayanan. And Kahit sa anong komunidad tayo, pwede tayo manilbi sa mga tao dyan. Departamento man yan, kolehiyo, pamantasan, sampayanan. And it's important that we take this as an opportunity to study the people, 
and return to the people. Kaya may sinasabi tayo mula sa bayan, tungo sa bayan. And of course, wag natin kalimutan to take care of ourselves, do your accords, please do your accords, find time with your family and friends, and know your limits. You can, you can, you, you can join as many orgs as you want, but please remember your limits. So we go back to passion and purpose. And I think within your stay in UP, some of the answers that you expressed earlier may change, some of them won't. But we need to realize that not none of these come easy. It's a very holistic process that balances your curiosity, your interests, your values, your skills, your principles, and your drive, among other things. And much of much of, much of these aren't constant. In fact, if you're gonna come into UP looking for a passion and purpose, it's not gonna come on a silver plate. It's gonna come as a result of your journey throughout this university. In fact, yung yung journey na ito is more realistically a struggle. Laban nga. Kaya pinaghirapan natin pumasok sa UP, paghihirapan din natin lumabas sa UP. Kasi marami tayo yung kailangan tubunan mula sa mga kumandidad natin. At sa katunayan, marami sa mga marami sa mga magagamit natin skills sa labas ng pamantasan ay wala sa mga silid-agalan, wala siya sa mga modules nyo. Kaya mahalaga ang ating mga karanasan sa mga orgs at sa, at sa mga iba't ibang um, extracurricular activities natin sa paglahok natin sa lipunan at sa pagkilala natin sa bayan. At mukhang malupa ang hamon na ito, ngunit wag tayo magpakalik. Narito ang, sambay, na, narito ang sangka estudyantehan ng UP. People like us na narito kami in your organizations. At mabuti na narito tayo ngayon upang itanong kung paano tayo makikilakot sa komunidad ng UP. Malaking hakbang na yan para tunay na gampanan ang pagiging scholar ng bayan. Kaya manalig tayo na sama-sama natin tuklasin at tuguna ang buhay is quite is ka. At sama-sama din natin dinggin ang tinig ng bayan dahil tayo ang pag-asa ng bayan. Kaya maraming salamat sa pagkikinig. Thank you for listening. Good afternoon to all and palingkura ng sambayanan. Thank you, Ra, for that wonderful presentation. Uh, as a fellow VS Org myself, I really have to agree with you on a lot of things you said. There are so many uh, oppor opportunities to serve the community, a lot of work skills across different fields that you can develop, and a lot of people that you can connect with when you join an organization. So hopefully, uh, the freshmen here can really consider joining organizations as they start out their college life. So again, if you have any questions, please send them through the Menti link in the chat. We will entertain questions after all the talks. Let us applaud our first speaker by clicking the clap reaction. Once again, thank you so much, Rafael Antonio Morelio, for the insightful session about Orgs 101, finding your passion and purpose. All right, so now that we're done learning about the BS Org life, it's time to move on to the ACAD life. Another big part of fresh year is trying to adjust to the college academic workload. Eng is definitely full of challenging but rich learnings. And as you go on through your college years, there will be many opportunities to apply what you've gained in your classes. With that, I'd like to introduce our second speaker for the day. Mathina Angeles is a graduating student pursuing a BS Computer Science degree at the College of Engineering in UP Diliman. She is a software engineer that has worked with several companies from multinational corporations like Procter & Gamble to local startups like Flint. As a competitive programmer, she has won the Cerebro Lab Startup Challenge, AWS Build On, and Blue Hacks to name a few. She is currently the Director for External Information Systems at UP CAPES, the Chief Technology Officer at the Google DSC UPD, and the VP for Innovation at UP CSI. She has also served as the Public Relations Head at UP ACM. Let us all welcome Mathina Angeles to tell us more about ACADS 101, Applying Your Learning. Hi everyone, can you guys hear me? Yes, yes. Okay, awesome. So I'll start my presentation. Welcome everyone to my talk. I'll be talking about academics and competition with you guys today. So, um, 
Okay. So welcome. So like I said, I'll be talking about academics and competition with you guys today because academics is really important. And what's another thing that's very important is being able to apply your learning in very practical ways. And that doesn't have to necessarily just be in your careers alone. Like it's, it's really good to have meaningful learning that's continually reinforced. And a good way to do that is by joining a lot of competitions. And there are a lot of collegiate competitions that you have access to when you're in a school like UP. So first I'll begin with an introduction. So like I said, I'm Athena Angelas. I'm currently in my fourth year. I'm taking BS Computer Science at the College of Engineering in UP Diliman. And I'm also a software engineer. I've been working in freelance web and mobile development for around six years now. I also do data science and I'm a competitive programmer. Um, I'll touch a little bit more about my background in competitions when I delve more on that in my talk later. But for now, I also, I want to start off by showing you our agenda for today and sort of an outline of how the rest of the talk is going to be. So here's my school survival guide for UP CoE students. Um, like I said, so initially I started with a self-introduction just so you guys can get to know me and sort of my background and my credentials when I'm giving this talk. And I'll proceed to academics and competitions. I'll teach you guys how to sort of game the system in order to maintain a really high GWA and how to use competitions, not only to reinforce the learning that you're having in the classroom, but also to enrich that learning and also make a little bit of money because <laughs> usually in these competitions, there are a lot of prizes and those pricings can be very enticing. And the third part is fantastic opportunities and where to find them. So this is where I teach you guys where you can find these opportunities, where you can get ideas for these competitions. And I'll also be sharing some tips and tricks for joining these competitions and more importantly, winning the competitions that you intend to join. So the first part is, has to do with school and your academics. We all know that our grades don't necessarily define us, but it's definitely important that you maintain a high GWA as much as possible because as much as people will tell you otherwise, these are things that, you know, really big companies when you're eventually going to be applying for internships and building your professional career will be looking at. Usually they're even as this, they put your resume through a filtration system in some companies and some of them really do filter out based on GWA. So you can't understate the importance of your grades. But there are ways to compensate for that if you're not necessarily somebody who gets good grades or if school, the learning style in school isn't really your thing. There are other ways in order to make your resume a bit more compelling to these job recruiters. And I'm also going to talk a little bit about that. So an easy way to get good grades and like I put here, do not let school interfere with your education and still get one in your classes. And it's not Adderall, it's to make the most of your curriculum. So I guess my biggest piece of advice in order to consistently get ones in your subjects, in your majors, and also your electives, is to build a curriculum that's really well suited to your skills and also your interests. So the first part of that would be to know your program really well. So whatever course that you're taking, be sure that you always know the requirements for that course, how many units you're expected to take, how many electives you're expected to take, and how many subjects and what majors that you're going to take. So usually this is discussed in the course outline. They should provide a copy for you right when you start the semester, when you're, fr when you're a freshman. And this is also available online in case you lost your copy or you can ask somebody for this copy. But your course outline is very important. So I suggest keeping track of how many units you have already taken and planning your semesters accordingly. Um, there are cases where people drop classes or they fail classes. That's inevitable for some people. And you know, no shame in that. Um, you can still graduate on time if you're, you just really keep on top of your course outline and make sure that the units you're getting will allow you to graduate given the time frame that you have set in your mind. But it is pretty common, especially in the College of Engineering, to see students who are staying for more than the allotted number of years in their majors, either because they're focusing on other things or if they take a leave of absence, whatever the reason. Um, as long as 
you really build your courses with the right intent, this shouldn't be a problem, not even for um, your employment prospects. So the next step is to do your research. So this kind of ties into my previous point. So when you're enlisting for classes, make sure that you research what the topic of the class is and also the professors who will be teaching them. So if you can get access to something like RUPP or if you have friends who are upperclassmen or friends who have taken previous classes that you're thinking of enlisting in, highly suggest that you discuss um, your prospects with them before enlisting for a class because your professors really can make or break your GWA, especially when it comes to electives. Um, and also don't just choose classes based on what classes your friends are taking. It's really important when you're trying to build a career and you're trying to build your CV or you're trying to build a resume that you show a degree of consistency where you have this interest and you have this passion and you're constantly taking the opportunity to enrich whatever it is that you're interested in because it shows that you're genuine and it shows that you're somebody who can really commit to whatever task it is that they're being given. So the next part is to join your organization. So this is also where your passion comes in, which is something that you know, people who are recruiting for jobs and also recruiting for schools really look at. Um, so we already sort of talked to you about organizations, but just in terms of your academics, student organizations is a really good way to network with like-minded individuals and also, and also to get access to additional resources that you can use in order to get a leg up when it comes to your academics. So a lot of people think that there are two kinds of College of Engineering students, one branch who are very active in their orgs but get bad grades, and people who get good grades but don't have any orgs. But those two things don't have to be mutually exclusive. Um, I find that if you're somebody who can do both, who can be a people person and be a really good engineer and that you consistently get good grades and you're really on top of your class, you're pretty much you know, set. And it is possible. And there's a way to do them hand in hand. My recommendation would be to join more academically oriented organizations. I mean, that's what I did. Um, I joined DP Capes, I joined home orgs like CSI and ACM and the Google Developer Student Club um, because these organizations I chose deliberately because I knew they would show my leadership skills as well as my, as my genuine passion for software engineering, which is the career path that I eventually want to take. So next part is me talking about competition. So just to give you a bit of a background, I've listed three competitions that um, I've won before. The, I've highlighted these for a very specific reason. So the first one I highlighted was Youth Hack. Youth Hack is an international organization that helps students learn more about startups, technology, and entrepreneurship. So I actually joined this in high school. I bet some of you are familiar with Youth Hack already. They're a pretty established or, um, organization when it comes to hosting these kinds of competitions. And this was my first introduction to competitions. I really had no prior experience when I joined Youth Hack. Um, all I really knew how to do was to do web and mobile development and the friend just asked me if I wanted to join and um, thankfully I agreed because we ended up winning with a medical delivery service application that we did in partnership with Mercury Drug. So my main takeaway for, from Youth Hack is that if you're on the fence about joining competitions, I would really just suggest taking the plunge and doing it because it really doesn't matter how much experience you have as long as you can contribute to your team in a really meaningful way. And even if you don't win, I think it would still be a really good learning experience because at the end of the day, joining competitions and winning really does involve building that habit and building that drive and that mentality of winning and how to win and how to make a good presentation and all that. And the next, the next two are the most recent competitions that I've joined and I've won. So the first one being Blue Hacks, which is a two-day hackathon for college students hosted by the Computer Society of the Ateneo. So this is their flagship event. Um, I, I guess some of you will also be familiar, familiar with Blue Hacks, but we recently won with a cloud-based instant managing and digital distribution application for schools. And to me, Youth Hack was one of the best um, representations of how teamwork is really important when you're joining competitions like this, particularly if it's a programming competition or a hackathon or a ideathon or a startup challenge. Building a really good team um, is really important and this goes back to my earlier point about how networking is really important in college and in the academy. And also the build on competition was pretty recent. It was hosted by Amazon Web Services in partnership with ASEAN 
organizations and we won with an end-to-end -end solution for accessing, storing, and sharing EHR with Amazon Managed Blockchain and Amazon Textrack. So here is where you can actually get opportunities from. So one being social networks and the next being social media. So what I mean by social networks, these are your student organizations, your extracurricular activities, usually even just following these pages like UP Capes on Facebook, not a plug, just genuine, um, will usually give you access to these kinds of opportunities because they do tend to post them because these are their corporate partners. And in social media, you can join social media like LinkedIn, Facebook, and Glassdoor. These, is, these are where usually these competitions are being posted and publicized, especially if they're an international competition or if they're an online competition. So these are your best bets. Um, how to join and win competitions. So my first step is to update your CV. A lot of these competitions will ask for your resume and the registration form. Um, not to say that they're gonna choose the winners based on your resume, but I do think it does have a weight in the eventual results of the competition. So looking really good on paper is really also important when it comes to competitions like this, especially if you're a startup joining a competition. The next is to find friends. Like I said, one of the really important points in this collegiate competitions is having a really good team who's tasks you're able to delegate with really effectively and you can really only do that if you really know these people well and know their strengths and weaknesses and how they work and how they fit into your personal dynamic. And the lastly, you need to read the guidelines. With every competition, it's really just a matter of who can maximize um, the guidelines that they're giving you and really play by the rules but also be creative in doing that. So the last point is discussing the process of winning. So what do you do to win a competition? So this, this is something that you can appropriate to sort of your own learning style and your own style of going about things. But of course, the first step is to register for a competition because you can't win a competition you didn't register for. And this is where team forming is really important. Make sure to pick a team that's relevant to the competition. Make sure you pick a team that you know very well, or even if you don't know them well, make sure that they have the credentials for it. Next is to brainstorm ideas. So this is where conversations and personal experience really comes into play because that's where your best ideas come from. And next is to present. So a really good presentation, a good prototype, a good MVP. I cannot underscore this enough. It's really what will win you the competition. You need to really work on your final product so you have something to present to the judges. And lastly, have fun. There's no point in joining a competition if it's not in your interest, if you're not having fun. Um, I think even if you don't win the monetary prizes or accolades, at the end of the day, you still win if you enjoyed whatever it was that you were doing. So thank you for listening to my talk. I'm Athena Angeles again. If you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to accommodate them. You can reach me through my email address, through LinkedIn, or any of my social media accounts. Just at Athena Angeles, and I'd be more than happy to guide you guys along and help you through whatever competition you're thinking about joining. Thank you, Mathina, for that very informative presentation. You have inspired us and the freshies here to take the plunge and basically take as many opportunities as you can, despite how intimidating they can be at first, because in the end, they can be very fulfilling in the, lo in the long run. So again, if you have any questions, please send them through the Menti link in the chat. We will entertain questions after all the talks. Let us all give our clap reactions. Thank you again, Mathina, for the insightful presentation on ACADS 101, Applying Your Learnings. Okay, so now that we know about orgs and ACADS, what is next? Well, college life is known as the stepping stone to the real world. Here we get an idea of how work will be like once we graduate. One way to do so is through internships. So let us now have our third and final talk of the day. Nicole Mendola is currently a fifth year civil engineering student and also a student ambassador for JP Morgan and Chase. She worked at JP Morgan and Chase as a corporate analyst intern and Unilever Philippines as a supply chain intern. She is a project management associate for PRM construction and development. She is the president of the Philippine Institute of Civil Engineers, American Concrete Institute, UP Diliman student chapter, and was also part of the student council from 2019 to 2020 as a finance counselor. She is active in advocacy organizations such as UP Women in Engineering and UP Children's Rights Advocates League. Her other affiliations include UP CAPES, 
UP Prime, and UP IE Club. Here's our speaker for Internship 101, Investing on Experience, Nicole Manjola. Okay, so hi everyone. Let me just share my screen. Okay, so again, uh, welcome to UP Freshies. So just to introduce myself, I'm Nicole, 50 years civil engineering student, and like what said a while ago, I'm also part of UP CAPES, and actually, it's one of my first orgs here in UP. Like, I think I joined, I was really young, but I was a freshie, pa. and yeah, the org really trained me with the foundation of my skill set. And uh, recently, I was also part of the student council, and now my current commitment is with PICE, ACIP, UPDS, UP as their president. So uh, in 2020, I was affiliated with three companies. First is with JP Morgan and Chase as a corporate analyst intern, and now as their student ambassador. And then with Unilever, a supply chain intern, and with PRM Construction and Development. Uh, PRM is a family-owned construction firm, and what I do here is mostly shadowing project management and, admi and administrative operations. So this is actually a big part of why I took civil engineering as a course because I grew up in a family full of engineers and they inspired me to pursue this. So why did I apply for internships? When I received the invite for this talk, the title Internship 101 Investing on Experience really struck me because it was the perfect encapsulation on what an internship should be. I was a pretty late bloomer when it comes to internships. I only had these experiences only actually this year, 2020. And I started applying during my fourth year in the university. And if you actually ask around, uh, you would know that some already apply as early as third year or even second year. And to be honest, I wasn't even planning to take on internships because it wasn't required on my course. And my long-term plan before was, was the typical one, like to finish my degree, to take boards and join the construction firm. But then uh, came a point in my life, and I don't know, I can't really remember if there was an exact turning point, but it was a mix of different things that gave me the idea that why not explore and get out of my bubble? You know, like don't stick to, don't stick to the plans that I set for myself and be super firm about it. So through different organizations with IE Club and UP Capes, I've met different people with so much internship experience that got me curious on the experience. Then uh, I'm not also promoting but like UP Cape's job fair whenever I would go around and attend my shifts I would see the different companies and then that hit me. I realized that I wanted more. Uh, I came for growth and I knew for myself that I wanted to widen the world I'm moving in and be open to a future full of opportunities and not limited to what I set for myself. Because as you know, um, I'm a civil engineering student, but JP Morgan and Chase is a finance industry. And my role in Unilever was supply chain, which was always perceived to be for industrial engineering students or those with specialty in operations. But the main reason why I applied for these companies and choosing to uh, invest my time with them is because I wanted to go beyond my course, but still find a way to integrate my learnings in engineering as a discipline, which is geared towards efficiency. I chose this path to not only take civil engineering related internships based, I guess, based on my purpose that I want to be constantly growing, constantly learning, and constantly improving myself by challenging my current situation and never settling for a comfort zone. I keep on telling myself that, you know, here in college, we're young, we're free to decide on what we want to be and what experience we want to take on. Because I've, I've seen engineers become doctors or other examples of people taking another industry confidently. Now, I'm not saying that it is wrong or it's not big enough when you take an internship that's directly related to your field because Ideally, that's what it's supposed to be. And I did run the man through the construction firm. And it was also an experience full of growth. And it helped me improve my academics more. But what I want to get through here is that what made me apply for an internship is due to that drive to explore. And 
hopefully achieve our maximum capabilities and you know unlock and further hone the skills that we have now through it. So my internship journey, uh, the experience with the different companies are always unique in their own ways. Uh, there would be new learnings and with this new people because you move in a uh, different and a new environment as well. So first with uh, JP Morgan and Chase, it's a multinational bank and the role that applied for in this company is a summer analyst position for their full-time rotational program, corporate analyst development program. The core business discipline of this program is analytics, project management, and process improvement. Um, I've always been an enthusiast of the finance industry. And in fact, I even considered taking up accounting or economics uh, as my degree in college. Like, even in movies, my favorite ones would also always involve finance. And this inclination for the industry was a big factor for me that piqued my interest in applying for JP Morgan and Chase. So throughout the time that I spent with the company, we got integrated with their culture, which I love so much because it was a culture of growth and the inclusive workspace provided us with so much opportunity. We were trained by amazing people, learned so much from banking and finance industry. And the best part, I got to network with people around the world globally from co-interns to employees and even leaders of the firm. And I guess a highlight of this whole internship process with JP Morgan, Chase & Co. was I was involved with the task on women empowerment, which is a very strong advocacy of mine. Then after JP Morgan & Chase, I, I joined Unilever. It's an FMCG company, fast moving consumer goods. And the role that I applied for here is a supply chain interest. So, why supply chain? For me, supply chain was the closest function that I saw close to engineering since it involves operations and systems. It was project-based type of internship. And what I did here mostly is automation. I was tasked to streamline different processes of obtaining data and collaboration across supply chain teams and even on the client side. I had, I had different mentors, great mentors, which I learned a lot from, especially on the technicalities and strategies of supply chain and even got to network from other teams as well that made me appreciate the whole chain and how it works as a whole to serve our consumers. So my favorite part of the internship with Unilever, like the highlight, was definitely the business week. I enjoyed the tasks given to us pre-business week uh, we had fun, like us interns, tasks, videos, and photos. It was a very exciting experience to be in. And the week itself, wherein uh, we got to collaborate with our co-interns. And in this way, I also got to know the company well, while having a really good time, and see the great minds of the people I'm working with. Then, lastly, uh, peer and construction and development. It was directly related to my course. so. It felt really real and you know how amazing it is to see concepts in class being applied to real life. So with PRM, I work closely with the project management side and I shadow ad administrative and management uh, operations of it. So it made me appreciate my course more and it's a process of integration for, integration for me as early as now, though I'm not a civil engineer yet. I would already be familiar with the operations of the company that will make it easier for me when I join the firm in the future. So challenges with internship. Uh, challenges I encountered with these internships is first, uh, when you're out there, out in the university, it's really a bigger world. And with taking on opportunities, it comes with great responsibility as well. The company will trust you with different projects and it will be up to you how to handle this. You can either go a mediocre path of just accomplishing work at hand, or you can go beyond that extra mile and do something extraordinary because this is your time to show what you can do. So the challenging part here is deciding what type of person you want to be and what you will do with the opportunity given to you. Because for me, I personally do believe like it's a mantra of mine that success is a two-way street. And it happens when the opportunity given to you is partnered with hard work on your end. So there is really a need to step up because in reality, opportunities as this does not come every day. 
So there's this pressure ish to make the mo- most out of it. So yeah, and then other challenges, uh, it can also involve communication because you're not dealing with students anymore. People you'll encounter in the company would range from different age groups, different walks of life. So it's really diverse. And there will also be a time wherein you have to be fast, you have to think fast, you have to be decisive and act fast. But then again, at the end of the day, adaptability is the key and something that can be learned throughout the process to overcome these challenges. So how do I find internship opportunities? With types of internship, there's actually a lot of industries. Uh, the ones that I'm familiar with is, of course, the banking industry and FMCG. Then there are also consulting groups and specialized firms like, for my case, the construction firms. So with the internship opportunities, it's really endless because there are a lot of ind- industries we can go to. So it will only be a matter of putting effort in looking for it. You have to there first research, research definitely on what are the available internships out there. You also have to network around, make use of your organizations, talk to upperclassmen or even alumni on what is out there. And lastly, use your resources. Like there are organizations that has database on opportunities. And for example, UPK, it's like if you would see on social media, they post a lot regarding internships. So basically in finding internships, the framework that I saw was to research, to network and maximize your resources. Then... After knowing, uh, after you know what are your options, the key in choosing an internship is really first to know yourself. Uh, What are my interests? What do I want to do? What are my priorities? And what makes me happy? Like, what type of job do I imagine myself doing? Now, there's no pressure to have definite answers on these because people grow. And with growing, our preference might change due to different factors. And that's perfectly okay. This is why... We explore. It's a constant process of knowing ourselves. And you also have to evaluate our long-term plan and the future we see for us. Then we then set that direction towards the goal you have planned. So I want to share you a cliche line. Uh, There, If you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. So uh, in planning your college life or what internships you want to take or what job you want to take in the future, It may not be the perfect plan right away, but what matters is you have a goal, you have a direction. It can change, but what's important is you know that you're going somewhere and you're actively doing something about it. Because throughout, like like I'm from CE, then I took finance and supply chain. I realized that, you know, that movement towards the success that you want, uh, it's not really a linear thing. There can be, there can be lat drastic, lateral shifts, but still, every day you focus on your direction, it's already a step towards achieving your goals. And you also have to start early, like remove that mindset that, oh, I'm just a freshie, it's a long way to go, I shouldn't care about the future yet, like these internships. If there's one thing that I would change in my college life is to start early and be future and goal-oriented as early as my freshie days in the university. But of course, like, you don't forget to have fun as well. And then advantages of having an internship experience. Uh, For me, the advantages of what I experienced is mainly on the holistic aspect of it. First is you get a different perspective. Like what I said, the the world is huge. Opportunities are endless. And taking on a role outside the university gives you a new view, very different from what you see in the university. Like you really get a new perspective from organizations to university and your experience outside. And then second is you develop new skills because no matter how good you think you are, uh, there would always be room for improvement and learning is always a constant process. And third is you meet people and you learn from them. Sometimes not even on the work itself, but there are a lot of key takeaways from them that would be useful for you. And lastly, the experience full of growth. Uh, as well, like, coming out of an internship, you become a better version of yourself. Uh, It really is investing on experience. And this type of investment, it has the best returns because what you get here is intangible. And what you take with you, the skills, the network, the experience, will be with you for a long time. And 
all this while having a really great time. And internships are actually fun. It's a different experience. So to cap this off, just some tips that I can give you, which I got from my own experience and from stories shared by other students as well. First is you have to prepare yourself. Uh, you have to know yourself and you have to be confident about it because the way you bring yourself matters a lot because it reflects how you move in the workspace and even in interviews. Then you have to equip yourself. Uh, you have to equip yourself with the right tools as well. You have to build a good resume to give a good impression. With resumes, you can search online or you can consult experts on this. And then you can also have practice interviews uh, to familiarize yourself in answering questions and other miscellaneous things like fix your LinkedIn, you know, dress well. And another important thing is to work on your soft and technical skills that the position would require. And then, ah, okay, a super important one also is that you have to keep in mind that you can't belittle yourself. You don't limit yourself and be brave to break stereotypes. Like, you might have doubts because for me, I did have these as well, that I am not one of those people that are beast with internships because like what I sh shared a while ago, I started pretty late. And yes, past experiences do matter, but it's not all that. Even if you feel like you're not enough because of the tendency to compare yourself with other people, that seems like must loaded with experience. Just, you know, take a dive and embrace the opportunity. I even remember in my interview for this company, uh, at the end of the interview, the interviewer asked me if I have a question. And there's this one question that's really bothering me and making me hesitant to go for internships because I was surrounded with people who are operations experts. So I asked, would it be an issue with that I'm a civil engineering student and the role I'm applying for is kind of far from my course. And the interviewer said that, uh, no, because what they, they look for in young professionals is the right attitude. So yeah, your technical skills would matter definitely, definitely, especially for special positions. But what's really important is the drive for learning, drive for growth and excellence that manifests your coachability. You have to simply give your best and be open to the opportunity in front of you. And lastly, trust the process. Like, do not overthink it that much. Yes, it is important, but see it in a way that even if you do not get in, the application itself, the series of interviews you've been through is already a win because you got to experience this. And you know for sure that the next time an opportunity comes again, you can do better and you'd be more equipped and would know and expect what to do. So yeah, in internships in general, this journey, there's no such thing as a lost cause. Again, it's investing on experience, whatever internship path you take, I promise you like no matter the intensity, there would always be growth. So yeah, I hope that uh, this helps you. Thank you so much for listening and whatever help or question you guys need, uh, feel free to reach me out and I'd be more than willing to chat with you and talk about it. It would be a pleasure, definitely. So yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Nicole, for inspiring us to believe in ourselves a lot more. Step up, get out of our comfort zone, and aim for as much growth as possible in our career journeys. Again, let us give our third speaker a clap reaction. Thank you so much once again, Nicole, for sharing your insights on Internships 101, Investing on Experience. Okay, we will now be having our Q&A session. If you have any questions, feel free to add it to the Menti link sent in the chat. May we also re request our speakers to kindly unmute and show your videos. Okay, let's get this started, shall we? Um, our first question is for Nicole. How do we stand out to companies, especially when we start looking for internships? What skills should we start developing now that will give us an edge in the future? Uh, for me, in standing out, like what I said a while ago, what's important is you should know yourself and be confident about it. Like, you can't fake your way through an interview. You have to be your best self and trust that uh, that's going to be enough for them already because Sometimes the companies look for what's unique about you and who you are as a person. Because 
if you're trying to fake your interviews to it, it's gonna reflect also in the workspace when you definitely when you get in. And what you showed in the interview doesn't reflect who you are in the workspace. So it's kind of a clashing concept from how they think of you. There. Oh, so the question again, the second one. What skills should we start developing now that will give us an edge in the future? For the skills, uh, when you're applying for a technical role, uh, definitely the skills that you should develop should be fit for the role. But then for soft skills, I guess you can start on, start on your communication skills because your communication skills reflects on how you present yourself. And it's very important in the corporate world, like how, you, how confident you say you are and how you, how you present yourself to them. So yeah, there are communication skills and also in org work, the proper work ethic. You can get that from being active in your organizations. So yeah. That's, that's for me, like the communication and work on your work ethics. All right. Thank you so much for that answer, Nicole. Our next question is for Ra. In high school, I was very much involved in extracurriculars, and I want to be able to do that same in college. How can I involve myself in orgs if I'm having a hard time with my ACADs already? That's a very good question, and I think it comes from the idea that when you're active in an org, you're not gonna have time for your ACADs. But I think Patina said earlier that that's not, that's not the case at all. You can find time to balance your ACADs and your involvement in organizations. The most important thing to, uh, to take note is to know how well you can manage your time and to know where your limits are in your, uh, in your level of commitment to things. And since you mentioned earlier that you may have may have some difficulties with your academics. Maybe you can focus your time with APADS, but at the same time, still find a community for you that, um, will, not only, that will not only build your skills or serve your interests or uh, help your community, but will also support you in your academic life. So in, some, in, in many cases, your APAD and your ORIC life can support each other. So uh, don't don't be afraid to join any or to join organizations that you feel like you'll uh, you'll grow in. Um, just always keep in mind that um, the priorities that you set are very much are very much important as well. All right, thank you, Ra, for that answer. Now our next question is for Mathina. Do you think that a career-centered org like UP Capes is very advantageous when looking for a job? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's 100% going to work in your advantage if you're joining organizations like UP Capes. So one benefit, not as a plug to UP Capes because I'm a member of UP Capes, but one advantage of joining an organization like UP Capes is one, you get exposed to different kinds of opportunities directly because you're a member. And Regardless of what committee that you work in, I find that there is an opportunity for you to directly involve yourself with these corporate partners. And a lot of the time, especially if you're an active member in these organizations, you get to talk to these companies and develop a relationship with these company representatives who you're meeting with. So that can, I find, really help me and my friends in UP Capes as well in terms of developing their career because they're already networking with people who are in the industry. And another benefit of seeing that would be that these orgs like UP Capes are really big organizations. So you get to interact with people who come from different backgrounds and different courses around the engineering department with you, but share the same passion and generally can be taking the same classes as you. So it could help you in your academics on one hand, but also help you when it comes to doing other extracurricular tasks that will really help you as an engineer moving forward. So highly recommend. <laughs> All right, very well said. Thank you, Mathina, for that answer. Now, our next qu question is for Nicole. I'm a freshie interested in internships. I feel like I'm not qualified enough for most internships. What can I do? Oh, no. First of all, I want you to have to stop that mindset that you're not qualified enough because you're still a freshie. You're going to spend a lot of years in the university. So there's a lot of time for you to grow. Like, like, like for my story, I only started applying for internships. I was already fourth year. So just by the fact that you're already thinking about it now, you have so much opportunities to build yourself. 
to be confident enough that you're qualified enough so that when you actually apply already, like let's say when you're second year or third year, you're already presenting yourself the best way because you already think that you're qualified enough and you, you remove that mindset already from you. All right. Indeed, self-rejection really is a big enemy for a lot of us. So I hope that a lot of us can really overcome that. Thank you, Nico. Okay, next question for Raph. What are your thoughts on org burnout? Uh, very, very interesting question. And I think it comes from a place that um, it comes from the BS org phenomenon, so to speak, that we're taking on a lot of responsibilities because we have many organizations and we need to burn out. Um, for starters, I think having an org burnout is part of just the natural process of being overwhelmed with a lot of things. It's not something to be completely ashamed about. And I believe that uh, organizations should be able to account for these things that many of our, many, many of us can feel exhausted. And I think what's important to, or to, what's important to realize is that when we enter organizations, um, it's, it's a twofold, it, it, you must have a twofold realization on your place in the org. Unang una, kailangan mong, kailangan mong ma-realize na, um, may commitment ka sa org, may commitment ka sa org mo. But at the same time, you're not going to be, you're not going to be, uh, you're not, you're not supposed to push yourself above your limits. So you need to strike a balance between your commitment and your limits in order to uh, avoid or maybe manage more burnout. And what's important at the end of the day is that whether or not you're burnt out, you don't lose your passions, you don't lose your interests, you don't lose your, uh, your, you don't lose your. Uh, love for learning, especially in organizations. So uh, let's all keep that in mind, especially kung medyo napapagod na tayo sa org. Na always keep the passion burning and um, let's all be considerate and kind to each other when we do have burnouts. And we need to be able to support each other in order to continue uh, with our response, to continue with our, uh, with our, with, with our purposes and our commitments and our goals. All right, that was well said as well. Thank you for that answer. Now our next question is for Mathina and Nicole. Since students can opt to take classes such as GEs in mid-year or go for an internship during the break, how should we know which one to choose? What factors should we consider before we decide to spend our summer break doing these instead of resting? Do you want to go first or should I? Okay, I'll go first. So, like, my advice to that is that as long as you're doing something that you love, it actually, to me at least, it doesn't matter. Like, I find that it doesn't matter for me. Like, I have definitely taken internships while in my regular year of school, not even mid-year, just in my first year and my second year, because I genuinely love software development, and that's what I see myself doing long-term. So, I've been doing this since high school. So, with with regards to your question of, you know, what should I do? Should I take a GE like in my mid-year classes or should I prioritize taking an internship? I think you need to choose based on what path you're building for yourself. So you need to really think long-term when it comes to things like this. Like what timeline do you have in mind? Are you somebody who needs to take those mid-year classes in order to graduate in the time that you want to graduate? Or would you prefer to take some internships and have a really enriching experience through that method? It also depends on the kinds of things you enjoy and what your work dynamic is like. And also be mindful of whether or not you're competing beyond your capabilities because you won't be able to perform at your best if you're somebody who's burnt out already or is constantly throwing yourself at work. So I think they're really important here is just basically do things that you're passionate about and make sure that you're in the field that you love because I don't think that should even be a problem for you if you really 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 love and are pas genuinely passionate about whatever it is you're doing or whatever course it is that you're taking. Uh, yeah kind of the same like what matters here is your priorities and you have to plan ahead like for example uh, if you decide now, oh, on third year, uh, mid-year of third year, I'm planning to take an internship. You have to make sure that you get the sufficient units during your first year and second year, like even the mid-year from first year to second year, to make sure that you, you have that time to take an internship for 
the for the last years in your in the university. So yeah, you just really have to have a long term plan to organize everything. All right, thank you both of you for those wonderful answers. We can move on to our next question, which is for Raf. I want to join the student council or freshie council, but I'm not sure if I can win the election because I don't know uh, many people and I'm not active in the chorus group chat. Do you have any advice? Well, that's a very good question and it warrants a plug because the engineering freshie council just opened its just open its applications for the engineering freshie representative and the counselors for the engineering freshie council. There are now, as far as I can remember, 12 positions to apply for. We have counselors, we have chair and a vice chair and the two engineering representatives. And I also came, I also had to go through that process of, of doubting myself kung papasok ba ako sa, EFC, sa UFC at that time, kung maboboto ba ako ng mga tao. And I think the correct answer there is, I think the, and I think the response there is to not think about how, um, how you're going, not to, not to think about the votes that you're going to get for the election. And I think you need, we need to focus on, we, I think we need to focus on providing yourself a platform to, um, to to help the freshy to help the freshy community, and I think that that's the very reason why the freshy councils were even established in the first place because they saw a need for the freshies to have a representation, especially in um, especially in administration and university level matters. And if you're the kind of person who wants to get involved in those things, then you already are one step of ahead of everybody else in winning the election. The only thing left to do is to really package yourself, is to really package yourself um, in a way that highlights um, how you want to serve the Freshie community. And that's how, that's how you get votes. But that's not going to be the case this year because um, we're, we're, we might not be able to hold any elections for the Engineering Freshie Council. So at this point in time, just sign up for the Freshy Council. If you feel like you have what it takes, you have what it takes to serve the Freshy community and build a life, build a build a college long leadership leadership experience in UP. Uh, just just visit their Facebook page. Nandiyan lang yung link. Tas sagot nyo lang. It's just there. So hope I see your application there since. Hope I see your application there, whoever, whoever you are, and don't don't forget to always serve the people. All right, all right, all about service to the community, indeed. Thank you so much for that. Our next question is for Nicole. What do internship opportunities look like right now because of COVID, and how do we get involved? Oh, actually, for my case, I joined internships during this pandemic. I joined JP Morgan last June, and I joined Unilever August to September. So, like what I said a while ago, you just really have to search. You have to maximize your resources. Uh, like UP Capes, they post every opportunity online. Like, there are a lot of internship opportunities, and especially on LinkedIn. Like, for me, I suggest that as early as now, you build that profile and then you network there and then you're going to see that there's a lot of opportunities for you so that you can explore as early as now. So yeah, like the pandemic isn't a reason to stop looking for that internship. All right, all right. A lot of, a lot of opportunities available online indeed. So thank you. Okay, for our next question, it is for Mathina. I'm currently participating in a competition right now and I'm having a hard time managing my team because of the physical barrier because I'm not used to this setting. What can you advise to improve our dynamics? Oh yeah, I totally feel you on that. Um, it's definitely an adjustment for everybody to transition to an online platform. I find that what really helped us, um, for instance, in the build on competition that was done entirely online, was that we scheduled very regular meetings, maybe around at least once a week, 
where we would dedicate this entire hour to talking, not, sometimes not even just about the competition. It's really about building the rapport because even when it comes to, it's also a tip for your academics, when it comes to group works, even if you're working with a team that you didn't necessarily choose, a really good way to engage them, whether it's online or to just get them to come to meetings, would be to befriend the people that you're working with. And this also applies to internships and when you're working. I know people like to say, you know, it's just business, it's nothing personal, but people are people and they will always take things personally. And the fact of the matter is, is that if people like you, the more time they'll want to spend on you, even if it's doing something like work or something very tedious and tax heavy. So building a rapport with people and taking the time to really get to know them or to engage with them or messaging them with you know, some fair amount of regularity really goes a long way in encouraging them to attend the meetings and be more engaged when it comes to doing your group works and really putting their 100% effort into winning the competition because now the stakes are higher because it's not just that they want to win themselves, they want their friends to win because now you guys are like one whole team and one whole network. That's my advice for you. Thank you so much for that answer. Now we can move on to our last question, which is for all three. Okay, so as freshies, we're all still really adjusting to college life. What advice can you give us so we can achieve and excel all in ACADs, orgs, and internships during these difficult times? Wow, you <laughs> um, I think the first thing we need to, I think the first thing we need to think about here is that um, it might seem overwhelming to do all of those things. Mag-aakads ka, may meron kang internship, tapos meron ka pang orgs. Pero I think what's important, and I think the three of us have, was, the three of us have highlighted many, many times during our talk, is to always find your, is to always find a, a direction for yourself. Know where you're going, plan ahead, plan long term. And with that, at least you have a sense of purpose as to where you're going. And everything falls into place after that. You'll be able to find the motivation to manage your time better, to find the, find the best opportunities for you in the future, to join the best organizations that will fit your interests and your skills, and in the future, to sign up for internships that will propel you to your future careers. So it always starts with, it always starts with, no, as with asking yourself, now what? Where do I go from here? Uh, I guess for me, uh, time management is really the key. Like, you have to find a system that works for you. And, oh my God, don't believe in the stereotype that when you're active with orgs or you're active with internships, your academics suffer. Like, you also have to give priority to your academics because you're a student first before anything. Like, you can't join these orgs if you're not a student. So, yeah, a matter of priority, find a system and manage your time wisely. And also, don't forget to rest because... If you get to have, if you forget to have rest, like you won't be a productive person. So it's like a domino effect. Like you won't be able to do the things that you want as well. So, like keep rest as a priority as well. Yeah, I I guess um, one major takeaway I'd like you to have from these series of talks is that there's really no formula as to how to excel in college or just even in life in general. I definitely understand the pressure to you know, be productive and to really have your orgs nailed down and your ACADs nailed down and your internships nailed down. But, you know, at the end of the day, no one can tell you like a step-by-step -step process of how to succeed in those things. You really have to pave your own path. And college isn't the end of it. If you graduate from college with awful grades, with no orgs, with zero internships, like you're still fine. Um, the fact, one, the fact that you're in UP already gives you an edge when it comes to employment. Like that's just the fact of the matter, like looking through the people that companies tend to hire, <laughs> that's already a ticket for you. But also so many successful people around the world, like the founders of Alibaba, KFC, like even big tech companies, some of them didn't really excel in college or didn't get, you know, their start at a very young age. So as long as you're doing things on your own terms, you're enjoying yourself, you're doing things that are good for you, um, you're fine. Like, don't stress too much about that. Don't <laughs> worry yourself over these things, but just try to do your best, basically. Well, all of your answers are really good ways to synthesize everything that we just talked about today. It feels like I'm a freshie all over again. 
Thank you, thank you. And that's a wrap for our Q&A session. A big, big thank you to our three speakers and thank you to everyone for participating. We will now proceed to the next portion of the event. I know our freshies are eager to know more about the specifics of what to expect in their UPD college life. We will now be having two virtual Tambayan sessions in the breakout rooms. One to two upperclassmen will be assigned per room. Here you guys can talk about anything under the sun. Feel free to ask questions about orgs, ACADs, internships, or college in general. This is also a chance for all of us to make new friends today, so let's get to it. From this moment on, our admin will be assigning you to a specific breakout room for the first virtual Tambayan round. You should see a pop-up on your screen. Have fun, everyone, and maximize this learning opportunity. All right, welcome back, everyone. I hope everyone learned a lot from each other in our virtual Tambayan sessions. A big, big thank you to our freshies for staying with us until the end. Thank you as well to our upperclassmen for all the cuento and valuable learnings. And a big thank you once again to our speakers for today's session. We greatly appreciate your time to talk about Career 101 for Engineering Freshies. We look forward to applying what you just taught us in our own college and career journey. As a token of gratitude, we hereby present these certificates of appreciation. UP CAPES presents these certificates of appreciation to Rafael Antonio Moralio, Mathina Angeles, and Nicole Manjola for imparting their valuable insights and inspirations as our guest speakers for Start Fresh Career 101 for Engineering Freshies given this 17th day of October 2020. Again, thank you to our speakers for imparting your knowledge about organizations, academics, and internships. But before we go, let's take some photos to commemorate this event. If you are comfortable turning on your video, please feel free to join our picture taking. I'd like to call on Layla to take the photos for today. Yay, hello. Hi, everyone. Uh, can, can we stop screen sharing? Ayan, okay. So we currently have three pages. Ayan, please show yourselves if you're comfortable. And show us your freshy smiles naman. We're on the first page now. It's okay. Like a tree. Yeah, so nice to see you. Okay. One, two, three, five. Okay, last uh, third page. Yeah, okay. One, two, three. Okay, thank you so much, everyone. Lyra. All right. That concludes the Start Fresh Career 101 for Engineering Freshies. Thank you to everyone for joining us today. This event wouldn't be possible without our company partners. Start Fresh 2020 is co-presented by UP Capes and Income Pass in partnership with Accenture, Analog Devices, JP Morgan Chase and Company, Maxim Integrated, Mondelez Philippines, Nestle Philippines, Texas Instruments Philippines Incorporated, and Unilever Philippines. Once again, a big thank you to everyone for attending Start Fresh 2020. If you would like to receive a certificate of participation, please submit your feedback through the evaluation form by 11.59 p.m. tonight. The link is sent in the chat. And stay tuned for our raffle winners announcement on our Facebook page later. We will be picking five winners for today. Once again, I'm Lyra and have a great day. Bye everyone. We hope to see you in the next UP Capes event.